everyone. This is video two of three in the Other Futures Conference series. This is going to be my interview with Nisi Shawl. So for those of you who don't know Nisi Shawl, and for those of you who do, here's a little bit of a reminder of who she is. Quote, I think of speculative fiction as basically taking care of all of our needs when it comes to imagining ourselves, imagining ourselves doing better, imagining ourselves in the future, imagining ourselves in the past. Nisi Shawl of the US is a journalist, activist, and writer of short science fiction and fantasy stories in which she develops alternative histories. Everfair is her first science fiction novel. What if the original inhabitants of Congo had developed the technique of the steam engine earlier than their colonial oppressors? In writing The Other, co-authored with Cynthia Ward, Nisi Shaw explores ways of making believable characters from a different culture come to life instead of falling back on cliches or ending up with flat characters. Nisi Shaw was one of the keynote speakers of the conference and she also spoke on a panel on uh, writing the other. She also has an online course which I'll uh, include in the description uh, area below so that if you're interested, if you're a writer and you're interested or if you're not a writer and you're interested in exploring the idea of writing other cultures, um, then you can check out her work. I am new to Nisi Shaw's work, but I do have some of her writing. And one of the things I really appreciate about her is the collections that she puts together. So I will do a quick Nisi Shaw haul. So this is Filter House. And Filter House is, I'll just read the back. Whether drawing upon the protective power of watermelon vines, the healing power of funk, or the pragmatic power of intel intelligent women, Nisi Shaw's collection of short fiction sparks the imagination. Her synesthetic descriptions elucidate an often psychedelic perception of the worlds therein. The tales in Filter House leap forward and backward through time and space, deftly weaving all too real topics like resource depletion, colonization, and racism within fantastical worlds of persuadable dragons, fickle gods, and interstellar travel. So this is Filter House. She also co-edits collections and anthologies dedicated to other science fiction writers. So this one is um, Stories for Chip, and Chip is none other than Samuel R. Delaney, who is also amazing. Um, like, he's totally amazing. Um, so there is a library sticker here so I can't read all of it but Stories for Chip brings together outstanding authors inspired by a brilliant writer and critic science fiction writers of America something 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 uh, Chip Delaney. Um, so a number of different luminaries contribute to this anthology including I'm just gonna look for names that I recognize Juno Diaz Hal Duncan, Joel Gomez, Nalo Hopkinson, Walida Imarisha, Alex Jennings, Kit Reed, Nisi Shaw, Cherie Renee Thomas, and Kai Ashanti Wilson. And so all of these individuals um, work together to create this collection of short works. Now, Samuel R. Delaney is alive and well and living in the U.S. and still writing and still creating. And I had the pleasure of, of meeting him and interviewing him at the Naked uh, Arts Festival in Toronto, the LGBT Festival of Books. Um, and, you know, they wanted to put together a collection while he was he's still here with us to realize how much he's influenced the work of others. I believe that Nalo Hopkinson has described uh, Samuel Delaney as one of her favorite authors. Another contribution of Nisi Shaw. I have the WizCon Chronicles Volume 5, Writing and Racial Identity, edited by Nisi Shaw. Uh, there was never a doubt in my mind as to the theme of this fifth volume of the WizCon Chronicles. Almost as soon as Timmy Duchamp asked me to edit it, I knew writing and racial identity. I stated firmly aloud, it seemed to me a thoroughly WizConnese topic. This is from uh, Nisi Shaw's introduction. And then finally, I've uh, reviewed this book already. This is Strange Matings, and this is a collection of science fiction, feminism, African-American voices, and Octavia E. Butler. This was written after the passing of Octavia E. Butler and is uh, an honoring of her work. So that is a little bit of uh, Nisi Shaw's work, and I hope that you enjoy this interview. See you in the discussion below. 
First of all, thanks very much for giving me some of your time at this conference, <laughs> first of all. Okay, I'm going to hold it straight. All right. Um, so can you tell us your name and the work that's inspiring you right now that you're doing? So my name is Nisi Shaw, and what I'm working on that I'm enjoying the most is a novella about Mardu Fox, who is really Aileen Lee. She is probably best known as the heroine of the subterranean, Jack Kerouac's fictionalized version of their three-month love affair. Um, she was also a writer, and um, my novel that I'm working on her is called The Day and Night Books of Mardu Fox. It's basically her version of what happened with, of course, magic. Do you think that science fiction can change? Is it transformative? And if so, what transformations have you seen come out of science fiction? I think that it is transformative. Um, what I've seen basically is people emulating the fiction and bringing it into life in, in real life. Um, I also see real life transforming science fiction, as in science fiction being more representative of minorities and uh, people who are out of power and oppressed people, those people being folded into science fictional realities, which can't help but have a great transformative effect, I think, on real life. So it's a cycle, feedback. And can you give some examples of um, the ways that you've seen uh, people take science fiction and bring what they've seen into real life? Well, actually, I was looking over your shoulder and I just saw a bunch of people going past uh, riding these two-wheel cycles. Um, so that's one example. Um, the flip phones, the uh, cell phones, um, were based on Star Trek communicators. So that's, that's another example. Um, I have heard that the people who invented those said, well, they have them on Star Trek, so let's do them for real. <laughs> um, and I, uh, I spend a lot of time with people who read. They might not be writers, but they read a lot of science fiction. They read fantasy, magical realism. What, can, what kind of contribution can readers make to this transformative uh, change? Well, they can do so much. Um, when I was listening to Nala Hopkinson speak yesterday, she talked about books as a collaboration between writer and reader, and that's really true. So first of all, reading, and second of all, thinking about what you read. Uh, I have some other ideas as well. Um, one thing that I hope that people will do as readers is nominate things that they enjoy for awards. Uh, you can become a juror for certain awards if you're a reader. You can uh, promote books as worthy of uh, Locus Readers Award, um, Nebula Awards if you're a member of the Science Fiction Writers Association. Um, join uh, the World Science Fiction Convention and vote for Hugo's. Uh, nominate Hugo's and vote for winners. So there's quite a bit that you can do. You can also um, request books for libraries to include. You can request books uh, at stores. You can form groups that read books and get other people to read the stuff that you really like. I think that there's a lot that readers can do. I have one question that I didn't give you any warning about, but it's about you, so hopefully it'll be fine. Um, you are Nisi Shaw. You're very well known for what you have written and also the ways that you support other and amplify other science fiction writers. So 
you have been very instrumental in sharing Octavia E. Butler with the world. I believe that you were also involved in Stories for Chip, for Samuel Delaney. And so I just want to say thank you for, you know, sharing the spotlight with, with other writers as well. It's a very wonderful act. Um, but I want to ask you about your work. So for people who are seeing you for the first time and learning about your work for the first time, where would one get started if one wanted to start exploring the literary work of Nisi Shaw? Well, I do have an, an not an anthology, a collection. That's what it's called when it's one person. A collection of stories called Filter House, which won uh, James Tiptree Jr. Award uh, in 2009. So... Um, I'm primarily a short story writer, and you could start with that anthology. You could also just use any old search engine, Google or whatever, and, and uh, look for Nisi Shawl. There are a ton of short stories available for free online. My favorite of those is a short story called Black Betty, which sounds kind of silly when I tell what it's about. It's about a talking dog. Okay. <laughs> but the dog speaks in African-American vernacular, and um, this causes some problems for, for the people who think they own the dog. So I recommend that one. I recommend uh, Filter House. Okay. Thanks very much for sharing some of yourself and your time with us. You're welcome. You're welcome.